welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another monthly meal prep. So this is the second month I'm doing this and last month was a huge success. I did 30 meals in one day and I basically had the month off. I had all of my meals ready. It was a huge stress reliever and I highly recommend doing this. I have a lot to share with you guys today, but before we get cooking, I wanted to let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by Our Place and I am so excited because they sent me their perfect pot. First of all, I can't say that I have ever said that cookware is really beautiful, but this is very beautiful. They actually almost broke the internet with the Always Pan, which is a pan version of the Perfect Pot. Before I say anything else about the Perfect Pot, I just need to let you guys know that this thing is insanely light. That is one thing that I don't like about a lot of big pots is they are really heavy and kind of bulky and not fun to wash because they're really heavy and lift in and out of your oven, that kind of thing. This is very, very light. So today I am excited because I have a little challenge for myself. We are going to do this entire 30 meal meal prep in this pot. So not all of the recipes that I'm doing for the freezer this month are pre-cooked. Some of them you cook after you pull out of the freezer, but the things that do need prepped and steamed and all of that, we're gonna do in this pot. So we're pretty much gonna prove that you can have only this pot in your kitchen and be able to make pretty much everything you need to cook. The perfect pot combines all your pots and then some. Things like stock pots, Dutch ovens, soft pots, roasting racks, steamers, strainers, brazers, and a spoon rest, which we'll get to in a minute. With the perfect pot, you can boil, crisp, bake, braise, roast, steam, strain, store, serve, pour, steep, pretty much everything you would need to do in the kitchen. And it moves seamlessly from the stovetop to the oven, which is one of my favorite features. You all know that I'm very health conscious and always looking for healthy alternatives. And this pot is made with our places, always reliable, exclusive, non-toxic, non-stick ceramic coating, so it cleans up easily. It has a built-in strainer paired with a perfectly sized pour spout, which I think should be in any kind of cookware because you're always trying to catch your noodles or you don't want things to fall out whenever you're trying to strain water off of what you're cooking. It's also integrated with a nesting roasting rack that doubles as a steamer and a beechwood spoon that nests right into your pot in two different ways. Their heavy gauge cast aluminum conducts and holds heat better than traditional stainless steel cookware, so they recommend a low to medium heat when cooking. It comes in our places for signature colors and you'll probably just want to leave it sitting out on your stove because it's so cute. A little fat goes a long way with this and I personally love using avocado oil or coconut oil in it. It's very simple to clean with some soapy water and the four piece set includes the 5.5 quart aluminum pot and the cast aluminum strain lid, the beechwood spoon with patent pending notch system and the cast aluminum nonstick roll roasting rack. I could not be more excited to be cooking with this today and if you guys want to check it out you can look at the links and the information in the description box and I think we're ready to get rolling. All right before we start to cook and whatnot I actually have my freezer bags here and this month I am doing the whole month in gallon freezer bags. I know last month I did do some of the like foil pans, the disposable foil pans, but they took up a lot of space in my freezer. So I would really like to try to put everything into these and then transfer them to like a regular nine by 13 if I need to bake it or whatnot. And I did use um, my label printer that I love so much. I will leave the link below. You can get it on Amazon, but I already printed out all of my labels. These are are like water resistant so they don't smear or smudge in the freezer it's obviously an extra step because you could definitely use like a sharpie or something to write on these um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick all of those on here and then we'll get started on our first recipe I know a lot of you watch my videos because I give keto friendly dairy free and gluten free options so I decided to go ahead and put these little stamps on the recipes um, that are gluten-free, dairy-free, family-friendly, those kinds of things. So let me know in the comments if you like this little added thing that I'm gonna be doing for this video. So the first thing I'm getting started on was some cheesy baked tortellini. And to be honest, I think this is one of the absolute favorite recipes out of this prep 
for our family. I don't know, I may say that again a little bit later, but this was really, really good. It's almost like a lazy lasagna, and I think it's a great comfort food for this fall. I did bag up the cheese for the top separately and just taped it to the bag so that I had it all ready to go when I dumped it into a pan and baked it up with the cheese melted on top. I may have mentioned this last month, but generally I don't do a lot of pasta. So last month I did a recipe, one pasta recipe for the whole month. And then this month, this is kind of our pasta recipe for the whole month. One thing I noticed with doing all of these recipes is prepping the meat, the ground meat in this pot really, really went quickly because I could put the lid on, it cooked up super fast, and it helped my process not take quite as long. This recipe could be gluten-free if you found gluten-free tortellini. I don't know if I've ever ran across it, but those of you that are gluten-free for everything probably know where you could get your hands on some. Either way, this sauce was so yummy. All right, so the next thing that I made up was some pulled pork, and to be honest, this is something that I don't do very often for the reason that pork butts are huge. So I decided to go ahead and actually cut it in half and try to make two meals out of this. I will try to remember to let you guys know how this went next month. Um, I've never really done it this way before, and then I did do my favorite sugar-free barbecue sauce, which of course makes this very keto-friendly and then if you did gluten-free buns you could always do lots of different variations of this meal and also swap out the sides for whatever your eating style is. Next I got started on a Olive Garden Alfredo recipe. I'm super excited to try this one. We haven't cooked it up yet, but I went ahead and I put some oil in the bottom of my pot and then just cooked up the chicken. And as you guys are gonna see here after a bit, this chicken cut up perfectly. Like it cooked so amazingly. I think because I put the lid on top, it really held a lot of the moisture inside the chicken and yet it still got that brown on the outside. It just was really the perfect way to cook up chicken. And this recipe is very, very simple. It's not mine. I will leave it linked below, but it really made up a good creamy consistency. One little tip I will give you is you definitely want to let it kind of simmer to get a little bit thicker and stir as you go so you don't end up burning it. But if you let it simmer, it does help it get a little cheesier and kind of creamier. Doesn't that chicken just look amazing? <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so I have everything here for my Olive Garden chicken alfredo, spaghetti squash, and peas. And the nice thing, if you are unfamiliar with spaghetti squash, um, you can roast it up and kind of take it with a fork and it looks a lot like spaghetti. It's a great keto-friendly, low-carb, healthy option instead of using pasta. And these guys can actually store in a dry place for like an entire winter. They are a winter squash and they store really well just as long as you have them in the right conditions. So Google that, make sure that you have a good spot to keep them. I know some people actually put them under their beds, funny little fact, but anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this and the sweet peas together in the freezer so I have them together, and then I will just store these in the basement and then pull it all out whenever I go to make this meal. All right, the next recipe is definitely keto friendly, definitely dairy free, definitely gluten free, all because of your choice of what you're going to put the shrimp mixture inside of. So if you put it in a gluten free tortilla, you're good there. If you're keto, you could go with some lettuce wraps, you're good there. And then of course, if you're dairy free, just make sure you don't do the cheese and you know, whatever toppings you wanna put on to make it work for how you eat. And this again was a very simple recipe. I'm excited to try this one. We're actually having it for dinner as I'm doing this voiceover tonight. And I think it's gonna be really easy because you just let it thaw out, you put it on a sheet pan, and I think it's only in for about five minutes because shrimp does not take long to cook up and you don't want it chewy and all of that. Again, I'll leave the recipe linked below. And you do want a nice size bowl to mix this up in. I put it in my mixing bowl because it's the biggest one I have and it, it really was easy to kind of be able to stir the spices and everything together. And as you can see, this month I kind of went the route of doubling a lot of the recipes. So I had two meals and I was doing just one motion, one recipe, but just doing it twice and that really um, helped cut down on time and just kind of made things simpler. This recipe I was really excited to find. It is not dairy free but it is a loaded potato soup and the reason that I felt like it was so genius is because the woman that came up with it is actually using hash browns that are from the store already frozen so you don't have to go through the process of cutting up potatoes into tiny little squares and it's just as cheap and I think it's a really good hack for saving time when you're meal prepping. So I think she used some ham. I decided to go ahead and just make up a pack of bacon for each bag and we really love bacon. And so another thing with soups I generally do is I will do like sandwich melts. So basically glorified grilled cheese or something like that um, with the soup. So those things um, I have never tried to freeze, which I do wanna try at some point, just making up the sandwiches, freezing them, and then getting them out and trying to fry them up and see how they do. If you've ever done that, please let me know in the comments below. Another little note I forgot to put on the sticker of these is you do add some cream in after you thaw out the baggies, but it's all in the recipe in the link below. All right, so this was probably one of the recipes I was most excited about this month, and that is some Philly cheesesteak stuffed peppers. And I wasn't sure how this was gonna go since I was trying not to use the tin foil 9x13 pans. I thought maybe they would fall apart, but I figured out, as you're gonna see here in a bit, how to kind of put them together and make them pretty hearty that they didn't fall apart. So this is the first time I used this shaved steak and it was really easy to fry up. I am curious to see how it reheats. I think it'll do well, especially just going into the oven. So you're gonna see I'm kind of constructing these things and the reason they held together I felt like well is because you put one slice of provolone inside of the pepper and then I fill it with all the goodies, the mushrooms, the onions, the meat, all of that and you could even put a little bit of barbecue sauce in this if you wanted to. I figured we will just end up putting it on top after everything has been baked up. So then after you fill it, then you put another slice of cheese on top and I realized 
that it really held up well inside the baggie and I just made sure that I placed them carefully in my freezer and I still didn't have to use the 9x13 pan. So obviously I'll put them in a baking pan when I get them out of the oven, but they were able to go in the freezer without taking up too much space. This recipe is extremely simple, extremely simple, but again, I love to give you guys really, really simple ones because I like simple things to put together and also then it's just together. You can get it out of the freezer, you know what you're having for supper, and even though you could have prepped it really quickly before dinner, it's just a, a process where you don't have to think too far and it's all good to go. So you just wrap the bacon around the tenderloins and these I feel like bake up the best if you have a rack to set them on on top of a like cookie sheet or something. But either way you can bake them in a 9x13 and then I just got some waffle cut sweet potato fries to go along with them. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna prep is just some really simple tacos. So making sure that I have the meat cooked up. So I'm just gonna put two pounds of ground beef in here, season it um, with some spices. And then I get this really, really big bag of these tortillas and I divide it out. Now, of course, this is gonna be more than two meals. I think there's 80 in here. So I'll divide this out into a couple of the smaller freezer bags and just throw them all in the freezer. We do tacos at least once a week. So then next month when I prep some more taco meat, I can go ahead and just grab from the stash I'll have in the freezer. Again, this is a super simple prep, but when it's ready and it's there and it's on your list of stuff and all you have to do is grab the rest of your toppings, like here I've listed lettuce, avocado, sour cream, shredded cheese, just the other things that I will want for this, just having it ready and there, it helps so much and it takes all the thinking out of it. You don't even have to think, you can just grab and go. And a quick little side note, I feel like I can kind of repeat this, but I feel like I get comments about it anyways. Just remember, you can always swap things out to make some things keto friendly. Like you can use this taco meat to make keto tacos in a lettuce wrap or in a keto friendly wrap. Same with the recipe before this, the bacon wrap tenderloins. They're definitely keto friendly. Obviously the sweet potato fries aren't, but just think you know, about what works with your eating style. All right, I'm letting the meat cool down. It's all cooked up and then I will put it into some smaller baggies and put it in here with the tortillas and it will be all set for the freezer. But I have some water in here. I'm getting ready to boil up and throw in some potato wedges just to give them a water bath really quick before I put them in baggies. That way they're ready to fry in the skillet whenever I get them out of the freezer. Okay, to go along with this meal, I have um, grilled Italian chicken, potato wedges, and then a cold salad. So I'll do like maybe macaroni salad or Italian pasta salad or something like that with this. So basically, it's really simple. I just get the zesty um, Italian dressing. And of course, there's regular, but I think the zesty kind of helps the marinade, tenderizes the chicken. And I'm going to go ahead and cut up some of the breast, just thinly slicing it, putting it in the bags along with the dressing and then I will get my potatoes out and put them in a separate gallon bag and just put them together in the freezer. For these potatoes, I did put them into a water bath for about five minutes, I think, something like that. And I feel like they're gonna do really well in the freezer. And then I went ahead and cut the chicken to go into the bags. I do like to cut it pretty thinly sliced. I just feel like it grills up a little bit better and the marinade can get all over the chicken a lot better. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this recipe is my keto chili or keto friendly chili, or maybe I should just say beanless chili. It doesn't have any beans in it. And then I did get some boxed cornbread. And of course, if you're gluten free, make sure you grab one that's gluten free. Um, just keep an eye out for those things. And I make this a little different every time. I will try to type out pretty much what I put in it down below because I know you guys ask pretty much every time I make this. So I did a lot of red bell pepper and I did my riced cauliflower, I did diced tomatoes, tomato sauce, and then when it comes to the spices, I just really shook in what I wanted and went. So if you like something with more garlic, if you like something with more onion, you could add more of those things if you want to. And if you like a little more spice, I really recommend adding smoked paprika. I did not add it to this just because my girls would be eating it but we do add it to our bowls whenever we go to eat it sometimes. This is a super simple one to assemble. So you're just gonna put everything in that you will dump out on your sheet pan whenever you go to bake this up. And I did also give these potatoes a quick little water bath. Um, I have had questions in the past about freezing potatoes raw or versus giving them a water bath. So I've only ever frozen them raw. So this is my first time around of giving them a water bath before I, um, or like kind of it's it's flash boiling I can't think of the right word you guys can probably tell me in the comments but it's basically where you just boil the vegetable for a couple of minutes you throw it into boiling water and boil it for a couple of minutes and I think the reason why I wasn't having any problems with my potatoes before because people were saying they'll turn black they'll turn black if you don't do that is because I would bake them or fry them or do whatever I was gonna do when they were frozen. I didn't let them thaw. Well, this past month I let one of my meals thaw out with the raw potatoes in it and there they were. They were kind of dark and I was like, oh, that's why. So if you cook them immediately and don't let them thaw, I think you can freeze them um, raw without doing the boiling water. But either way, um, I'm just trying it out this way this time. All right, I have to give a huge shout out to this recipe. Again, a really, really simple one. But last month I made one meal of this, I think. I don't think I made two. And I'm not kidding. Even a week later, my daughters were asking, Mom, can we please make that honey maple chicken again? <laughs> so this, I decided to go ahead and make two meals. And I also made a pretty good amount of chicken breast in the bags just because it worked out great as leftovers for lunch the next day too. And it is gluten-free, dairy-free. Of course, it's not keto-friendly or low-carb, but... It is a really good family-friendly um, way to marinate your chicken. So you need some honey, some maple syrup, and then just some stone ground mustard, the like larger ground mustard, and just mix it up. And then I just kind of grilled it in the frying pan with a little bit of oil, and it makes a really good caramelization on the outside of the chicken. I think that's why we thought it was so good. And then the next day I reheated it in the air fryer and it was amazing. And then on top of that, I am going to be making broccoli salad with these meals this month. And I like to pre-make my bacon for my broccoli salad. It freezes perfectly, it thaws perfectly. That way I don't have to cook up bacon on the day that I'm going to be making these meals. All right, this meal I made last month and I didn't put keto friendly on there, but I could have because these meatballs are very keto friendly and you could make mashed cauliflower to go along with this, but I made up the biggest batch of mashed potatoes that I've ever made. I have three growing girls and last month I, the portion sizes I made with the mashed potatoes were not nearly enough. So I actually filled my pressure cooker with 10 pounds of potatoes. Yes, 10 pounds. <laughs> so even if we have leftovers, they will love that the next day. And this meal is one of our family favorites, having barbecued meatballs, mashed potatoes, and peas. And again, with the meatballs, I just kind of put in the spices as I go. I don't do a lot of measuring 
and I just put these on a cookie sheet again with trying to get away from using the foil pans. I put them on a cookie sheet and flash froze them. So I just made sure that they were frozen hard so that I could put them into a Ziploc bag with the barbecue sauce and they wouldn't get smashed. And it worked out pretty well to do that. And then with the mashed potatoes, I just did some butter, salt, pepper, and some sour cream. And then we can add more to this if it needs it, like more sour cream or something, whenever I pull it out of the freezer. All right, so now we're going to make up some stuffed chicken breast, and this is a great keto-friendly option. We have never tried this recipe before, so I'm excited to try it out, and that is some broccoli cheddar stuffed chicken breast. So I did rip up my broccoli really small. That's always my tip to you guys is don't use a knife on broccoli if you don't have to, just because it makes so much less of a mess if you just use your fingers to tear it up. And then it just had simple ingredients like some cream cheese and some shredded cheddar cheese. And I did use a lot more cream cheese than the recipe called for in this just because I wanted it to stretch a little bit further. And I did four breasts per meal and they were pretty large breasts. So I think they will be great for our family. Okay, and then if you guys are counting, you're gonna realize that, that I actually made 28 meals in this video. That's because 29 and 30, I actually am just doing some really simple chicken wings in the air fryer and they're just, yeah, chicken wings. And then I have the sauces on hand, so I really didn't need to actually prep them and they're something that we really enjoy doing is having a wing night. So other than that, this is all of the meals and I still love, love this idea of having everything ready for me in the freezer. It's so easy, it takes the stress out of making dinner and of course, you know, for some of the things, you have to grab some extra things at the store but the bulk of your meal is prepped and ready to go. If you guys like this video, don't forget to comment below and let me know that you liked it. Give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here. Like I said, this worked out so well last month and I am probably going to continue making videos like this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will see you guys in my next video.